Hello viewers, welcome to my channel on Cut Africa Live, a channel that brings you insight of African politics. And I'm always your guide, Degraft Amwako. I want us to watch this video from an American economist called Jeffrey Sachs, and I will be back. It's interesting, we ask, we heard from the minister of DRC, what's wrong with your country? Well, we don't even start by saying the King of Belgium created a slave colony for 30 years. The government of Belgium ran the slave colony for another 40 years. The CIA assassinated your first popular leader, Mr. Lumumba, and then installed another dictatorship for the next 30 years. And then Glencore and others now suck out your cobalt without giving you tax income. We don't reflect on that. We say, what's wrong with you? Why don't you govern properly? And so we have a system, but we need a different system. <laughs> we cannot turn this over to the private sector. We already did about a hundred years ago. First, the G20 should become the G21 by inviting systemically the chairperson of the African Union and the African Union to be the 21st country. 20, the European Union is a member of the G20 as the EU. If you add the AU as the 21st for the G21, you add 1.4 billion people to representation at that crucial event. That will change decisively the discussion because 1.4 billion people are not at the table for finance right now and they need to be so my first recommendation is the G21 I love the G20 add one seat 1.4 billion people with the AU represented second we need a order of magnitude change of development finance the rich countries just borrowed $17 trillion for COVID. The poor countries, nothing. Because the rich countries can borrow at zero and the poor countries pay five or 10% coupon rates or have no access at all. So the world exposed its grotesque inequality this past year and a half, rich countries didn't say, we tighten our belts, why don't you? My country spent $7 trillion of emergency funding, not one penny for anybody else, by the way. $7 trillion, it didn't even cross the imagination of the U.S. Congress to include a few crumbs for the rest of the world. But the poor countries cannot borrow. That's what we should have heard from the World Bank. I didn't hear that from the World Bank. I didn't hear real numbers. Real numbers are in trillions right now because the world economy is 100 trillion a year. But we don't talk about real numbers. But my job, all I know in this world is long division. Divide by 100 trillion and then see whether you're talking about something real or not. So that's the second thing. We need massively to increase the lending and borrowing capacity of poor countries at near zero interest rates like the rich countries have. Then they could get something done. Hmm. Yeah, that was coming from an American economist called Jeffrey Sachs. You know, uh, this has been publicly known, but I think it's about time a lot of Africans, we get real about our history and how that history has impacted today's generation. Even though we have bad leaders who now has turned into Western puppets, sometimes we also have to look at in another direction that after independence and the Western countries realized that Africa 
is going to do well on our own because of our natural resources, they end up eliminating most of our great leaders. Most of our great leaders were somehow sponsored to be eliminated because let's talk about Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah was taken off power by coup. And as we know right now, that coup that happened was sponsored by CIA. And you ask why? Because Kwame Nkrumah was a Pan-Africanist, which he was empowering many African leaders that were coming up to come together so that we can build a strong Africa. So somehow it was not a good news for some people and he was eliminated. Let's talk about Thomas Sankara, Burkina Faso. Let's talk about Patrice Lumumba of Congo. All these leaders meant well for Africa, but they were somehow eliminated and that foundation they built of if you meant well for Africa, you are going to be eliminated has been able to fall down into the today's leaders because it has put fear in them. So most of them will prefer saluting the Western countries than to rebel against them so that they will be a target to be eliminated. That is what has led what is happening in Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Guinea at the moment. Because the military think most of the leaders are Western puppets who are only taking orders from the Western countries. So the military has taken over. And that is why a lot of Africans too are very angry when ECOWAS said they are going to attack Niger. So, so we have leaders like Kwame Nkrumah, we have leaders like Patrice Lumumba, we have leaders like Thomas Sankara, Africa is going to struggle because the current leaders are cowards. The current leaders are cowards and they are not bold like how these leaders like Nkrumah, like Thomas Sankara, like Lumumba, they are not that bold like them again. Now we only have leaders who say yes Amasa, who depend on foreign aid, who depend on foreign loans before they can do anything. They don't depend on our natural resources. They don't depend on the human resources we have. They don't depend on anything to generate money in their own country. They only depend on loans. And if you are a leader, that depends on someone, then you have no math. When the person tells you to do something or when the person tells you to change your policy to suit that country. That is our struggle. So we are only hoping that few years to come or some time to come, we are going to meet leaders like Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, like Thomas Sankara, like Patrice Lumumba, so that they can fight for the well-being of African continent. Please, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button so that anytime 
I will upload any great content, you will be notified. Thanks for watching.